Hey guys, this is Cameron from 15 and I'm back at it with another video for you guys. And this is another video about the Clippers. So uh, Clipper fans, we have finally made our career on who is going to be our head coach going into the next season of the 2020 season. And that essentially is, uh, as you see, you know, Tyron Lue, which a lot of Clipper analysts and a lot of fan, well, some fans wanted as the head coach. I personally wanted him as the head coach. Um, now, obviously, you're going to have your Laker troll fans like they've been trolling the Clippers for the past week and a half since they won the championship. Or you're going to always see them um, trolling, oh, why would they hire a freaking coach that LeBron made, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. There was a reason why he was hired. And Steve Ballmer, Lawrence Frank, and Michael Weiner, they saw, you know, obviously what he could do. And they also saw that he has had championship experience. He has come down, come back from a 3-1 deficit. And, you know, he knows what to do. He isn't, you know, dumb. He was a head coach in this league at a point in time a few years back for a reason. And, you know, despite what people say, like, yes, you can say, well, maybe LeBron was more the damn catalyst. Um, at the end of the day, you can still, at the, end, at the end of the day, he was the head coach of a championship winning team for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, you know, I wholeheartedly can't expect um, him to be a championship coach with this Clippers team. Now, obviously, you know, the seat is going to be very, and I mean very, insanely hot because there are huge expectations, huge expectations. The Clippers, honestly, really in reality, it's finals or bust for the Clippers next year. But in my personal opinion, I gotta say, you know, the Clippers gotta make the Western Conference Finals this upcoming NBA season. You know, I kind of going into the season with like, eh, I'm just gonna sit back, enjoy what I'm getting and take it one game at a time instead of focusing on matchups that, you know, you need to earn your way to get there. And I think that's what Ty Lu needs to talk to these players because he's noted for having good communication with players. I think if he go, I think he should go in there and I think he is gonna go in there and tell the guys, hey, let's not worry about one team. Let's worry about the team presented in front of us and let's beat that team in front of us. When the time comes, the time comes and we'll focus on them. And that's another reason why the Clippers hired him. He's a good communicator. So we can see what's going on in the locker room, how some players feel, how, you know, whether feeling individual, individually are about the team. You know, I definitely do think Kawhi definitely probably signed in, signed off on this and said, I'm cool with Tyron Lue. And even Paul George probably said that as well, you know? And then another thing, you know, there be, there, I, apparently I heard there's some Clipper fans not liking the move. Listen, guys, you know, just because Tyron Lu was on the same bench with Doc Rivers and stuff like that, guess what? You know, there isn't some things he maybe thought that, you know, maybe he tried to tell our say in Doc's ears, like, hey, Doc, maybe you should go this route and you know, Doc didn't listen, because we know Doc Rivers is a very stubborn man, you know, when it comes to coaching, you know? Maybe there were some things that Ty Tyron Lue recommended to Doc. Maybe, Doc, we should go this direction. Doc just didn't listen to him. And another good thing he's credited, he's being a good, he's a good X's and O's coach. So maybe he can come up with an offensive system, because also, apparently, they're, they're his assistants are Chauncey Billups and, um, Larry Drew as his assistants, um, which, you know, I think are two really good, you know, hires um, from the Clippers standpoint. And, um, you know, he's a good X and O's coaches. He'll put guys in the spots that they need to be in and make sure they're running plays the way the play needs to be run. Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of any other things I can say. You know, he'll make those adjustments. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, when the Clippers interviewed Tyron Lue, I guarantee you, there's not without a shadow of a doubt, 
when they talked to Tyron Lue, they said, would you have benched Trez for the Clippers to succeed and get past the Denver Nuggets? And I guarantee you, Tyron Lue said, more than likely, we probably would have to go that route, you know? And I think Tyron Lue would be the type of coach that when he knows something is not going right, he'll talk to that player and be like, listen, I can't play you. I can't. We saw time and time again for all these other teams in the NBA um, in the playoffs, they made adjustments to players that were just not good matchups for players. The Lakers did it. The Miami Heat did it. The Boston Celtics did it. There were, you know, teams out there that just stopped playing certain guys because they saw, no, the matchup is not good for me in my hands. It's not going to help my team out there to go win. Doc Rivers and the Clippers were the only team that never made those adjustments to players potentially playing, you know, who are, or players who are playing bad. They didn't tell them, take a seat on the bench. We're going to go a different direction, which they should have did with Montrezl Harrell. I still can't believe Doc Rivers freaking did that. And then his introduction press conference, he wants to say, well, you see, you can't make the same mistakes in the playoffs time and time again, especially when you know it's not going to work. Really, you say that now after you leave. Uh, Steve Ballmer probably told him, you didn't make the damn adjustment. That's why you're being fired. Yeah, he was let go. I personally think he was fired. Anyways, we're not here talking about Doc Rivers. Um, I think Tyron was a good hire, and I thought there were some Clipper fans disappointed in this. Listen, would you would have, what I'd like to take, you know, a former assistant coach being a first time, you know, head coach for this team, yes, I would have taken that. But, you know, at the same time, you could say this, maybe Tyron Lue, you know, knew the ins and outs of what was really going on. Maybe he can try to find some way to correct that, get players on page with, you know, what's going on. Um, <coughs> excuse me there. Um, you know, as well as, you know, maybe he can fix some the thing, the main culprit, or the main thing that was going wrong with this team, you know? Um, you, If you bring in a new head, yes, it would have been good to hear maybe a new voice. You know, I definitely, I do think hearing new voices, a new voice would help. But maybe Tyron Lue in the aspect of having that new voice, in aspect of maybe reinvigorating these guys to play and stuff like that. And maybe, you know, the Doc Rivers tone was over and over. Maybe the players just stopped listening to Doc Rivers, especially time after time. They realized they were keeping continuously going back to Montrez Harrell. And other than some other players knew, why is he even out there if he's not doing much of anything? Um, so, you know, I, I personally think this is a good hire. Um, like I said, Clipper fans who are, I guess, disappointed in it, well, too bad. You're gonna have to deal with it. You know, I know you wanted maybe another dude to coach the Clippers, but hey, listen, it is what it is. And you're gonna have to, you know, stick with the, with the cards you're dealt with and stuff like that. Personally, I like the hire. You care to disagree? That's fine. We we disagree, we agree to disagree, you know. Um, not everybody's gonna like the hire. And, you know, some people have their own opinions about the hire um, and stuff like that. but. Being objective, I think Tyron Lue's a good hire. And it seems like maybe the Clippers are trying to go with the Raptors route, where the Raptors, they fired Dwayne Casey. They got Nick Nurse in there, who was on that same staff, and what happened to them? You know, I don't want to say I want to go back and pass and say it's going to work for the Clippers, but, you know, maybe a new voice for a team will work. You know, even though it might be the same sort of typical, you know, philosophy or identity, you know? And I personally think Ty Ru is, Ty, Tyron Lewis, is that coach, will create more of an identity for this team and stuff like that. And like I said, okay, I'll, I'll take the hire. So we got our head coach down. Now the next thing the Clippers front offense has to do is figure out what are they going to do in free agency. You know, obviously the big targets, probably this free agency is resigning if Jermichael Green opts out um, and even resigning Marcus Morris. I think they definitely have to bring those guys. You're going to have to deal with what, and, and then everything else, you know, we'll see what the front office does. If, it return, if they're thinking about trading some players, like maybe a Lou Williams, 
or sign and trade into Montrezl Harrell. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I'm already my only you know free agent move that I know the Clippers definitely need to make is re-sign Marcus Morris and re-sign Jermichael Green if he opts out of his contract. Um, try to get a point guard, a playmaking point guard, or a good, decent backup playmaking point guard, as well as get, I would say, a decent backup center. And when I mean backup center, I mean like a seven-footer to backup Zuba. Um, so we don't have that issue again, you know? Um, and stuff like that. And I also believe, uh, uh, whether it doesn't matter, I believe the Clippers are gonna just let Trez walk, or if they somehow sign Trez, Trez then they're gonna probably sign and trade him to another team and get assets for him. Yeah. And like I said, in terms of playmaking point guards, there's a Rondo out there, but Rondo's probably gonna be asking for some money, especially coming off a championship. So, um, I don't think you can sign him for cheap money, personally. So it we'll, we'll just have to see where no that goes because that's the next thing that's front office for the Clippers are gonna have to tackle. They're gonna have to, have to tackle these free agents and what they want to do with this roster. Are they going to retool this roster into a way where it will be better suited to go out there and put a championship effort on there? I'm not trying to say last year's team, you know, was definitely not a championship roster. It was a championship roster until you get to the playoffs and you saw the deficiency. And yes, you can say, well, other factors led into that. Maybe the fact that they didn't want to be in the bubble in the first place, which is a very valid criticism of the Clippers or a very valid reason. And my personal opinion is, well, if they didn't want to be in the bubble, then why did they go in the beginning? That's just my personal opinion. Especially when the whole drama aspect came about the social justice stuff, they should have just said, you know what, we're just going to be done and we're just going to go home. That's my personal opinion. Listen, I know the bubble was a tough aspect to go into there and play because you're not seeing the family members and stuff like that. But in my personal opinion, if you didn't want to be up in the bubble in the first place, why'd you even go to begin with? It goes to show which teams have passions or not. Clippers' heart maybe not have been were in the bubble and stuff like that. And like I said, you know, the virus kind of messed it up because they were on a roll, you know, only about a month before the playoffs were about to start. So, yeah, but other than that, Tyron Lue's the new head coach of the Clippers. Chauncey Billups is going to be the assistant, as well as um, Larry Drew is going to be another of the Clippers' assistants. So, yeah, I don't know if, say, Rex um, Kalayman will be returning to the staff, or Sam Cassell will be returning to the staff as, you know, assistant, as assistant coaches. Sam Cassell might maybe be looking out, you know, maybe taking other interviews with teams that are interested with him or coming up with a final decision. I definitely do think Sam Cassell will probably be a head coach somewhere. Um, you know, like I said, maybe the Pelicans could sign him. The, um, you know, the, Pel the the Rockets who are interested in signing him. Maybe the Pacers could sign him if, they, if they're interested. So we can definitely see where, you know, that will go. And like I said, We'll probably find out as the leading weeks go on, see if there's going to be any other assistants either returning or there be more new assistants, as well as we're going to see what this uh, front office in terms of the free agency aspect of the roster is going to be. But so far, so good. I like the hire, and uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, Tyron Lewis is the new head coach of the Clippers. If you like this video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on the hire, as well as... Um, Hit the subscribe button if you want to get more well, um, Clippers content. I'm probably not going to make Clippers content for a while. I'll probably just be making Clippers content based on mostly moves we make, our free agent moves we make. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And, yeah, so whenever the Clippers make another big move, uh, I'll definitely be back to make a video. So other than that, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully you guys are having a great rest of your day or night or whenever you're checking out this video. Until then, guys, um, go Clippers. And... See you guys in the next video. Peace.